Hi everyone, welcome to JD Gardens. We finally got a break in the weather today, so I'm out here in Garden North getting some work done, and I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to give you a tour of our greenhouse. So come along. Now before we go inside, I want to talk to you about the most important thing when setting up a greenhouse or a planter bed, and that's location, location, location. You want to make sure that your plants have the maximum amount of sunlight as possible. Right now our greenhouse is set up on the north side of our property, meaning east is over here to my left and west is over to my right. So when the sun rises in the east, it's going to have all day shining down on the greenhouse till it sets in the west. And during the summer, we can give us about a good 10 to 12 hours of sunlight. So it's really the perfect location. I actually did a video about this, setting up a planter beds when talking in relation to the, with the sun. We'll leave a link to that video below. So we actually custom built our uh, greenhouse based on our needs and the space that we had allotted for it on the property. Now, it's a peak roof or also known as an Eagle's Peak style which means that it has a high ridge and steep sloping sides. It's made of a one and three eighth inch uh, galvanized tubing and it sits on a wood timber base. And it's about 12 feet wide by 22 and a half feet long. Now, as far as the entrance, we framed it out of wood and we made it a full size door. It's 36 inches wide by about 81 inches high allow us to bring wheelbarrows in and out. So why don't you come on, I'll show you inside. So as you can see, it's pretty spacious in here. That high peak roof gives us a lot of air up here. I think we have about 13 foot to the highest point. So we, we actually added these columns on these concrete piers this will allow to help support uh, in case there's a heavy snow load on the roof. But you know, with the uh, slant of the roof, it should be fine. The snow will just slide right off. But it also allows us to add more poles going left to right and front to back for hanging plants and other pots and stuff like that. So uh, it support, it's, uh, serves more than just support. Now, as far as the floor, we actually added pavers. This gave us a nice solid surface to work on. So when we're bringing in wheelbarrows and other equipment, it's easy to roll on so we don't have to go through uh, the mud. And we actually did it in a checker pattern just to give it a little sense of style. Now along the entire perimeter and the back, we added planters. These are about uh, 12 inches high and about 18 inches deep. And this is actually where we grow our tomatoes during the summer. And what's great is that it gives us about a good eight feet or so from the, uh, from the planter to the top where we can attach a string where we grow our tomatoes on a vine. So uh, you got a picture of this in the summer with all the tomato plants growing in a vine. It's pretty cool looking. And in the center, we added another planter bed. And again, it's about 12 inches high and it's about uh, 36 inches wide. And it gives us a lot of room for other plants. And we gave ourselves really generous aisleways, about 36 inches. Like I said, so when we're bringing the wheelbarrows or for when Jackie and I are both working, we're not knocking into each other. It gives us a lot of room. So I know what you're probably thinking. You're saying, Dan, this doesn't seem like your traditional greenhouse. There's nothing protecting it from the elements or uh, from any critters. But actually there is. If you can make it out from the camera, we actually have the entire interior of the structure lined with this metal fencing. It goes in the front, in the sides, and in the back, and even the ceiling. No critter is actually getting in here. Kind of feels like you're caged in. So we actually call this place the bird cage. So as far as protecting it from the elements, a lot of people like to use plastic sheathing or polycarbonate for the outside of their greenhouse. And we actually do too. But what we find, it's better to keep things open like this for most of the year. And I'm talking about spring, summer, and even fall. 
This allows for great lighting and much better air circulation. And then we don't have to worry those, those summer days, those hot summer days, keeping the fan going to cool the area down. We just kind of expose everything to the elements and it works great for us. Now, it is the end of the summer and that means old man winter is gonna be coming with a fury. So it's time that we wrap the greenhouse up and get it ready for those cold winter days. And we're gonna show you just how easy that is. So there you go. It really wasn't too difficult to put the greenhouse plastic on. Now I know a lot of you might uh, look at that video and say, you know what, that just, just seems like a lot of work. I think I'm gonna leave my plastic on year round. And that's okay if that's what you want. But for us, for the spring, summer and fall, we'd rather leave it as open as possible to allow for the better air circulation and the sunlight. But as you can see, we were able to turn the birdcage here into a uh, cold frame greenhouse which means it's protected from the elements uh, but there's no heat source and that's okay for now because we're actually just growing our winter crops and uh, they're very uh, cold hardy so but as the months go by and uh, we start uh, getting ready to grow our spring crops we'll bring you videos on when we uh, add the heat source and the exhaust fans and the thermostat and make this a true greenhouse so i hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something uh, leave me a comment if uh, you're interested and show you a video on how we built it and be sure to hit like and subscribe so until next time remember yes we can uh. <laughs>